Greetings and welcome. My name is Aaron Craig with Let's Learn This Together, and this is part seven of creating a beautiful inventory inside of Game Maker 2.3. Now we're gonna implement the drag and drop system using just a DS grid, and the code for that is right here. So we're gonna learn how to set a dragged item that we can move around with our mouse, and then we're going to actually replace that item by using the DS grid set grid region functions. And I'm gonna go over and give you a visual representation of that as well to help you understand what those functions are doing because they can be confusing if you're just using them for the first time or sometimes even the 10th time. If you want, you can just download this whole project. The link is in the description below and you can just play around with it from there. And be sure to stick around to the end of the video for details on my beginner games course giveaway. Let's go into our item uh, controller and inside of the draw event, we're actually gonna do pretty much everything inside of here. So we've already got a bunch, but I'm gonna try and show you just how to do a drag and drop system if that's what you're interested in. So outside of our point and rectangle system is where we're going to implement this. Now, the only thing we have to add inside of here to be able to know which one that we're currently on is a variable current item slot. And we're just gonna set this equal to I because whichever one we were in when we we're in this rectangle, this is the one that we're going to begin by dragging over. So that's what we need to know uh, which one it is first. And we don't have that variable set anywhere else. So I'm gonna go ahead and say current item slot equals undefined when we start. Okay, now outside of here, dragging system. Okay, we're gonna check to see, we're gonna use the middle mouse button here as well. So if mouse check button MB middle so while we have the middle mouse button down, we're gonna say dragged item equals instance find obj item parent zero. And that's because we're actually creating our items and that's how we're actually displaying them as well. So if you're, if you're not creating it yet, then I guess you could just uh, draw a sprite over here instead, but I'm actually going to create the item and set it on this. So then dragged item dot X equal to mouse X, dragged item dot Y equal to mouse Y, dragged item dot visible is equal to true, dragged item dot image, X scale equals our item scale to make sure it's the same size and the image Y scale. And we're gonna set dragging item equal to true. So let's go ahead and create this variable and dragging item here as well. So dragged item will start as undefined and dragging item will start as false. So while we're holding it down, we can move an item around. Let's go ahead and give that a try. We should be able to come in here and if we're holding middle, we can now move this item around. We do have a slight problem where as if we're holding this down, then it actually changes to the next item that we're on. And that's not really what we want. And if we leave it there, it kind of stays. So we have a couple of things that we have to add here. The first thing we have to do is not create new items when we are dragging an item. So up here, when we are creating an item, we want to add a check. So we're gonna say, and dragging item is equal to false. So because dragging items becomes true, we should now not create a new item when we are hovering over it. There we go. And you can see that the text down here doesn't change. And so that's what we want. Now we've got that and that looks really weird. So let's go ahead and move on to the next thing. So we're not creating it. Now we want to, when we release it, we want to change places with an item if we are hovering over an item that we can change with. Otherwise, just reset everything back to the way it was. So we're gonna say if mouse check button released MB middle, then we're gonna move the dragged item outside of the screen. So we're gonna put it to negative 100 on both of these uh, equals negative 100. And dragging item is now false. And we're gonna set alarm zero equal to one because we actually need to know which item we are hovering over 
which is going to become our current item slot. So when we release it, we want to change the current item slot, get that, and then we're gonna use it. The other piece of information we need is which item we're actually dragging. Now we could do a complex script of finding the object index that we currently have, comparing it against our grid and so on and so forth. But I'm just gonna say when we uh, click the mouse button the first time, so mouse check button pressed. So this is a one-time event, which is what we need. The first time we click it, we're gonna say dragged item slot equals current item slot. And we don't have this variable, so let's go into the create event and set this equal to undefined start. Now, the first time we click it, we'll save it. And then when we go to change it, current item slot will be the one underneath. Dragged item slot will be the one we're carrying. And we're just gonna do a swap and we'll call it good. Are you ready so to start making the game of your dreams? Then head on over to letslearnistogether.com to check out my trilogy of courses to take you from beginner to expert. Game development is hard and frustrating when you're going at it alone and you don't have anyone to turn to. Join me on the journey and I'll be with you every step of the way to alleviate all of that frustration. And by the end, you'll be ready to make any game you can set your mind to. Go ahead and get started now at letslearnistogether.com. So let's create the alarm event. I'm going to open up obj controller i'm going to add alarm zero i'm going to drag this into here so it can be full screened as well and we're just going to say swap items and here is where kind of the complexity comes into place so i'm going to walk you through it as we go along the first thing we're going to need to do is create a ds grid because we're just going to take all the properties of that item which are stored in a ds grid and put it in a temporary grid so I'm just going to say var temp grid equals ds grid create. It can hold one item and it's going to be item height because that's what they all are. Then we're going to say save the item we're hovering over to temp. Whenever you are swapping places with anything, you have to have a temporary container for one of them. It doesn't matter which one you do, but because we're going to take one item, place it and replace it, we have to make sure that we know what the data was for the one that we replaced. So I am just gonna save the item that we're hovering over, and then we're gonna take that item, put it in there, and then replace it. So there's a function for this when you're using grids, which is kind of confusing, but also can save a lot of time. And that's called DS grid set grid region. Let's go ahead and take a look at their manual because I think it does a fairly good job. So we're gonna go from one grid to another, which is the index and the source. So the index is the grid that you're going to, the source is where it's coming from. And you just set where and how many cells you're copying, and then it will just copy those from the X and Y coordinate you do. So you can see here that we wanna copy six cells and we tell it, start copying those cells at one and one over here. And so it just copies those over. Now that's a little confusing and I still get this messed up from time to time. I have to try it over and over again to actually get it right. But it does save a whole lot of time because you can just do it in one function. So we are going to save the item we're hovering over. So temp grid is where we want to put this information and it's coming from my items, and we're gonna do current item slot zero. So we're starting on the item we want on the X position. We're starting at the top of the attributes because we wanna copy all of them. We're staying on that same item, so we don't, we're not copying any extra items. And we're going all the way to the bottom of the properties. And then we want to just copy it over into zero and zero on the temporary grid, which is the only slot we have available to put something. Now, replace item we're hovering over. So now we're gonna do the same thing here, DS grid set grid region, but now it's gonna be from my items to my items. So we're just gonna take everything from one item and copy it to an X. So for, for one 
or two steps or one or two, not even frames, but one or two lines of code, we're gonna have a duplicate item in there. But that's okay because after we copy it from here, we're gonna take the temporary grid we have and copy the item from that. So now we need that dragged item slot that we saved. Zero, dragged item slot and item.height. And this time we are putting it into the new item which is the current item slot. That's where we are hovering over. So that's where we're putting the item. And this is why I'm leaving comments because <laughs> oof, I took me a while to figure this out just right. So replace item we dragged with item we were just hovering over. Now DS grid set grid region, my items, temp grid, and this is all just going to be zero, 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 going all the way to item dot height, dragged item slot zero. And then we're going to destroy our temp grid because we made it up here and now we're going to get rid of it because we no longer need it. Let's run this and see what happens. I drag this and there we go. It replaces those items and it moves it and that's the drag and drop system that we needed. And that's actually all we have to do. So these are kind of complex, but they do a lot of work for you with just one function, which is really, really handy. So let me see if I can give you a visual indication of what we're doing. And I apologize, it has to be done with my artwork, but I think this will kind of make sense. So let's walk through this code line by line with a visual representation. So the first thing we do is create a temporary grid. So essentially we take this and we copy it and we paste it and we make a temporary grid over here. Now it is completely empty. It's all, well, it all starts as zeros. So I guess maybe it's not empty, but this is a temporary grid over here and it just is zero index. So voila, kind of looks the same as the other ones same height and everything, but there's nothing inside of it that matters. Then what we do is we save the item that we're going into. So let's say we're gonna take our sword and we're exchanging it with the cape. So we're hovering our sword, we're moving the sword, and we hover it over cape and we, we've released. Now we're gonna save our cape. We gotta save one of them, it doesn't matter which one, but I'm gonna save the cape by putting it inside of here. This now becomes our uh, temporary DS grid. So let me delete this. And now essentially this becomes that DS grid. We filled it up there. We've saved it. We have to save it because in the next line of code, we are now taking this sword, copying it and putting it inside of here. So now we have two swords. We've taken everything from there and put it in there. And it is now slot zero even though you can kind of see the one. Don't, don't think about that too much. Then what we do is we take this one and then we move it into here. So this now becomes the first slot. So we erase the zero and it becomes the one. And that's it. Then we, I guess we destroy the temporary grid because we make sure we don't want to have a memory leak, but that's, what's happening here. We just need to know how tall our attributes are, which is item dot height. And we need to know where we need to copy the temporary one into and the one that we're copying to as well. So we're just copying it over and then deleting the original one with the temporary grid that we created. So that's kind of the visual illustration, which hopefully helps a little bit. Using this function, I found you just have to play around with it quite a bit to make sure you get the numbers right. It saves a lot of time though, once you understand what it's doing and how it works. But that's our drag and drop system using just a DS grid and it works really cool. That's exactly what we want. We can also do it while we're in here and you can see that the description doesn't change. And there we go, everything is working perfectly.
On every Game Maker tutorial and video I put out from here into the future, I'm going to be giving away one copy of my beginner game developer course, a great way to go from no programming experience to be able to make your own games. To be entered to win, just like the video and leave a comment showing me your keyboard works. You can leave a comment about anything. A week after the video is posted, I will send you a message with the coupon. If you want, you can use it for yourself, give it to a friend, or apply it towards a more expensive course by just sending me an email and letting me know that's what you'd like to do. If you want to see more content from me, then subscribe and ring the bell to be notified every time I put out a new video. But that's all I've got for you. So thank you so much for joining me, and as I always say, keep making, keep learning, and I'll talk to you later. A huge thank you to all of the awesome people who support me over on Patreon. Their names are on the screen now, and every dollar pledged helps me create more awesome content. You can support me for as little as $1 a month and get access to exclusive perks like my Discord server, your name in the credits, early access to my YouTube videos and courses, and more. Check it out at patreon.com slash letslearnthistogether.com or find the link in the description below and become a patron today.